difficult. And yep, levels seem to be fine. And um, just say anything. I'm just going to. Good check. morning. Oh, yeah, your sound sound levels are fine. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So. Hi, this is Garvey Campbell. You're watching Carnival Network. I am with Deanna Andrews, who um, runs a website called Dischick.com. Um, Deanna, could you tell us a little bit about your website and uh, what it's about? Sure. It's a music and carnival blog. Um, I am, my parents are Guyanese, so I'm from West Indian heritage. So I wanted to create a blog where people could understand the music, and the events and the party scene and carnival, the history, as well as its significance to the culture. Um, so I created the blog just basically to explain it. Mm -hmm. And now it's become almost like a go-to resource for some of the mass bands, the DJs, artists, um, where they want to learn about other things happening around the world. So it's exploded in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> what, so what, what gave you, what motivated you? Um, I mean, we've all got our, we all love, love all of the various cultures, our own culture, all of that. But what provided the motivation for you to actually go to the trouble of actually setting something like that up and putting it out there? So I'm a writer just in general. Um, anytime I want to communicate something, I usually will write a post. I used to write on Medium or I would just write like really long Facebook posts. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to create a blog and actually explain the scene because there were so many misconceptions. Um, I was targeting people from outside of the Caribbean culture, but I realized even within, we don't understand some of the events, the festivals. Um, I had people asking me how, who they need to contact to get a caravan, a costume. And I'm like, you just go onto this website and buy a costume. <laughs> but because they just had never done it, there's no real place where they can get that information. And then they don't know what to expect. They don't know how to act. They don't know what's normal, what's not normal. Mm -hmm. And so there was just so much that was misunderstood. And so I took it upon myself to kind of clarify just from my perspective. I see. I see. So, I, I, I mean, I kind of get that that as well over here as well the the people out, out the people outside of the culture i suppose know pretty much very very little but then obviously what you know you do come across people who actually have parented from the islands um who are missing bits and pieces of information don't know why things um have been done um i can remember interviewing a uh, short pre um a while ago and in the interview, he, he said that while he was actually over here for a, um, a performance, he went to a library and found out why um, some of the customs were the way they were in Grenada for Caracu. So he was even saying that there were certain things that, that were done and obviously passed on generation to generation. But he found out that um, the reasons why actually by going to a library all the way over in the UK um, and found out the reason why they did things the, the way that they did them, which obviously gave kind of a bit more of a meaning. So what, what would you find are some of the common things that people don't understand about um, Caribbean, the Caribbean culture, um, whether it's island specific or just the region in general? Well, especially here in New York, I think people don't understand how we fet, how we party. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I talk to people of or not of Caribbean descent, they assume that a party scene is something very different from what we actually do in the party scene. Um, <laughs> In New York, of course, there are a lot of different parties, different types of events, and you have kind of subcultures mm -hmm. with how they do things. And so I had a friend actually come with me to a party and she looked at me and she was like, you know, people are just kind of having a good time. There's no substances here. <laughs> There's no, you know, like drinking to the point of basically passing out. Mm -hmm. Like they just didn't understand certain things. But then a power soca song came on and people started acting wild and running around. And I remember accident was big at the time. Yes. And so oh, people yeah. were bumping into each other and she just did not understand what was going on. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let me help prepare you. Let me give you some of the insights so that when this happens, you're not confused. You understand that people will run into each other, push and shove each other. And it's not aggressive. It's all in fun so that you don't you know, take it the wrong way. So I thought it was really important to just kind of clarify some of our behavior because we think it's normal. 
Yeah. <laughs> we're pushing and shoving each other and running around the place and we think that's normal, but someone from the outside does not understand. Um, and that expanded to also the carnival scene and music in general. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it just, yeah, I'm very big on, I have a teaching background as well. So okay. I'm very big on kind of educating and explaining things so that they're not misconstrued. Okay. So in your, I suppose what, one of the other things I'm, I'm always interested in finding out from different people is why do you think, why do you think the education of, um, you know, of what the Caribbean's about, what it has to offer, um, its culture, its art, its music, why do you think um, there are so many people who, who pretty much are un un unaware of um, its, exist its existence to a point? I mean, even even within the Caribbean community that lives in, um, yeah. in, in, in much of the Western world, there's obviously a lot of gaps. You know, we're obviously connected by a lot of the entertainment side of things, but um, the, the, reasons, the reasons why we do things, the, um, you know, the independence days, the, the, the carnival mm -hmm. characters, the history, the, there's like all of these gaps. Why would you, uh, why in your own words do you think that, that there are all of these, um, these gaps in, in knowledge out there today? I think just the way that we communicate amongst ourselves, we're very esoteric. We assume that everyone that we talk to already knows things. And so we don't really explain anything. I mean, I, my first time going to Trinidad Carnival, I went um, as part of a study abroad program. Okay. And so everything was sort of handled for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I want to go back. I don't know how to get a ticket to a party. Right. <laughs> I don't know yes, yes. who I need to contact for this. And everyone's like, oh, you just talked to the committee. I'm like, what committee? What are we, what's happening? What are we talking about? <laughs> and it can be very confusing. Yeah. And I think we put up barriers that we don't need to. Mm -hmm. um, I think we don't really explain certain things. Uh, we don't explain our music. We don't explain just the way that we communicate with each other. We just assume mm -hmm. you already know this thing. Um, walk into any Jamaican restaurant, especially in New York, good luck finding a menu. We assume you already know what's there. We assume you, you came in prepared and we don't really make things accessible to other people, whether that's mm -hmm. outside of our culture or even just the way we communicate to each other. We don't, we don't give history. We don't give backstory. We just assume yeah. things are the way they are because they've always been that way. Okay. And I, I have an issue with that just because I think if you want to expand and you want to make things accessible, you've got to put it into a context where other people can understand it. You can't assume that when you say power soca, people know what you're talking about. True, very when true. you say when you say mass, people know what you're talking about. Even in different parts of Trinidad itself, you say things and, and there's confusion. I think we really need to get better at just kind of demystifying things. Just be very clear and make it accessible. Okay, so do you? I mean, this is something I found, but I, I actually wanted to, because we've spoken before, um, I wanted to find out your opinion on something as well. So when I've looked around, there seems to be, there seems to be two sides um, with regards to people who are, who are talking about or promoting things to do with the Caribbean. There seems to be people on one side who are traditional. They want to they wanna obviously... Um, mm -hmm maintain and retain the integrity of the uh, various aspects of um, culture in the Caribbean. While on the other side of it, there are people who are really good at marketing the, um, the Caribbean, um, especially the entertainment, the music, all of that, mm -hmm. um, while at the same time, they're very low on, on, the, on the education, I suppose, and the, um, you know, the traditions, the observances, the reasons, all of those things. Um, I wanted to get you get get your in, insight on what you think the solution could be to that because the traditionalists don't seem to be good. Re it seems to me they don't seem to be really good at, at, at marketing the culture, especially to the younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, you know the you know, but they have they have a wealth of knowledge. The amount of knowledge that they've got is absolutely insane. Um, yeah. So much rich information that without it, I'd probably say within 10, 20 years, um, it's going to be, it's probably going to be lost or hard to find. It's, it's almost impossible to find a lot of the time on the internet, to be honest. Yeah. So I suppose I'll, I, I'm, I'm interested in finding out your thoughts on, um, 
on what you think the some, you know maybe some solutions could be, or where you think some of the, yeah. some of those groups, um, those two demographics, those two sides are going wrong. Yeah, I think a lot of it is communication. You're right about marketing, which is another part of my background. Okay. Um, I think it's important that we not see marketing or explaining these things as we're giving it away or somehow watering it down, or if more people become involved, it's going to change the thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's like that African tradition of passing it down. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really talk about things. We don't really, especially older generations. Um, it's a it's a weird gap. You know, you would think you would want to pass down your tradition, your culture, your history to the next generation. But what I'm finding, especially with like some of some carnival associations, some big um, like promoters, they they don't really want younger people involved in things. They feel like they're going to spoil it. They're going to mess it up. They're going to do something different. With it. Seriously? Um, seriously? Wow! Yeah, I actually just wrote a post about this about Brooklyn Carnival. Okay. Um, there's this idea that we've got this. We know it. We've been doing this for so long. You know, we we understand it, and you are going to mess it up. So we're going to just hold on to it. Okay. Which does a disservice because then they turn around and look at the young people and go, you don't even know your history. It's like, where would I have learned that? <laughs> like, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me wow. what the Midnight Robber is. You didn't tell me, you know, what, why we do this parade. You didn't tell me why we have these things at particular times in the year. Mm -hmm. So how would I know this? True, true. Again, like you said, it's not recorded history. There are a lot of things we're not writing down. We're not, you know, making public. So how else are we going to learn yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's 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 unfortunate. Um, it it really does do a disservice to the culture because younger people and you know I consider myself a little young. Um, we're taking in other things. We're living abroad. We're living outside of the Caribbean, That's so right. there are other influences. And if anything, you want to get younger people involved because they now have so much access to information yeah. and they know what hip hop is doing. They know what dancehall is doing. They know what you know other cultures are doing. Afrobeats is exploding. They yeah. know what all these different things are, and you're not giving them their own history. And that's unfortunate. It does a real disservice to the culture. And so when you do have younger people doing things, they're doing a different version of it because this is what they have. I saw, um, I saw, I mean, I've seen some, some video. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a seg segue. They, I've seen some videos where people are, are equating, you know, the whole the whole twerking thing, equating, <laughs> equating it with carnival. And, oh dear. And it's like, <laughs> and obviously, and I suppose as well, one of the other things as well is that, you know, you do get people who see the craziness, the way we act it, at carnival, at um, a lot of the events. And obviously what they take away is the most obvious, obvious things that they see, which is, you know, the bad behavior, the music, right. definitely, you know, the overproof rum, all of that great stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, without I, I suppose without the um, without the culture, the, the knowledge being transmitted, they walk away with, with that. That's I, I think where the danger of it being watered down actually occurs, mm -hmm. when people um, take away what they see, but the people who are engaging in and part of the culture haven't been given the information of of the background of of why things right. are the way they are. So the other thing I, I went, wanted to find out, I, I'm you know. There's, there's going to be people watching this from, from the UK who I'm pretty sure are, going to, are very interested, and I'm interested too, in, how, in what the soca scene and carnival scene is like down where you are in, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, what's it like down there? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> the great thing and the bad thing about the Brooklyn soca scene is we have so many options. Okay. Um, as far as promoters, as far as DJs, uh, venues, of course, are, are disappearing just because sometimes, again, without the knowledge, without the background, and the information, mm -hmm. some venues don't want us to come to their spots because, oh, you're going to be throwing water. You're going to be, you know, out late. People are going to be leaving drunk. I, I don't want this in my neighborhood. I don't want this in my area. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's gentrification, which is playing a part of that. Yeah, of course. Um, but we also have some people who are removed from the music, right? So they don't know 
the newest songs, the oldest songs, and a lot of our parties are themed. You have flashback parties. Right. You have parties where we're going to be playing, you know, the hot new music. There's a, a, a party that's right before Trinidad Carnival, and it's like, you know, we're going to get you familiar with all the music you're going to be hearing in Trinidad. Right. If there are people who are removed from the music, they're in the party kind of standing up. They don't know this song. Mm-hmm, they don't know mm-hmm, this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this artist. You brought out an artist on stage no one's ever heard of, and they're just like, okay, fine. Um, one thing about Brooklyn is people can be very unforgiving. Wow. <laughs> if they don't like it or they don't know it, they're not moving. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sometimes really hard to penetrate that. What I do like is that some of our party promoters will put out mix CDs, promo mixes before the event to get you familiar. So people know. Um, yeah, because mm. the last thing you want is that you throw a party and it's great music. You know, I'm I'm very much of the soca music culture. So I'm listening to everything. When songs drop, I get notifications from people. Did you hear this? Did you hear this? Um, so I'm very much into the music. So when I go to a party and I'm hearing great throwback soca, mm-hmm. or I'm hearing, oh my goodness, this is the hot new soca, or this is music from Grenada, St. Lucia, Antigua, and I look around and there are people who are like, I don't know this song. It's so sad, wow. <laughs> it's just so sad. Because for some reason, they're not accessing the music. And so they're being removed from it. And so you go to a party where you don't know the music. Mm-hmm. Are you coming back? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> You're probably true. not gonna do that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so unfortunately, I always say it's kind of on life support, but I do know that there are promoters out here really trying to maintain those 100% soca parties to get people familiar with the old music, the new music. It's just really sad when I go there and I'm in my glee having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I look around and there are other people who are just like, they're not, they're they're not on the same page. They're not on the same page. (laughs) It's so heartbreaking. So I'm doing my best. I'm working with quite a few people to just kind of get the music out there, put it into context Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, People will post, oh, Marshall did a hot new song. If I haven't been following the music, I don't get the relevance. Yeah, <laughs> Especially yeah. now, you know, he just did a major song going after another soca veteran. If you don't know the context, you're not as amped as everybody else. Yeah, so yeah. when I posted it, I put context around it. Like, listen, this song is great because. Uh, yeah, it's this about, is important yes. because. Yes. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we can turn that page. But I do have to give it up to the promoters who are really trying to maintain that scene. It's difficult when you have venues shutting down, pulling permits, et cetera, or you have patrons who are just yes. like, throw on the new Cardi, I don't want to hear this. Even though it's 100% soca party, they want to hear something else for some reason. That's <laughs> nuts. So what, they want to hear Cardi B in a soca fit? <laughs> they want to hear, it, it's crazy it's very crazy and i'm sure brooklyn is not unique to this um we have parties that literally have soca in the title you have people coming out and they want to hear something else or vice versa it's a 100 percent soca party but you have a dj who's known for playing hip-hop mm-hmm. why is he on the cast yeah yeah <laughs> why so what are we doing i, I, sp- I suppose that the next the next the next question then would be these people who are requesting other types of music are they people who who take part in carnival over there, or or have they travelled to car? Who who are they? Or are, <laughs> or, or are they people just hopping on the bandwagon, or they just want to go out to a club, or 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 what? I mean, I suspect it's a couple of things. Okay. I suspect that you know Brooklyn has has had a soca scene for a very long time. Okay. Um, like there were major venues that people just knew on a Saturday night you'd go there. You don't know who's playing. You don't know what's going to happen, but you know that's the place to go on Saturday night because everybody goes. Right. You have something similar when you get the marketing here where it's like there's an event every weekend. <laughs> there's something mm-hmm. to do all the time. Right. Venue permitting. Um, so you have people who are going to things and don't really know what to expect. They don't really know what they're getting into. Okay. Or they're coming there and they're like, oh, I want to go to a party. And they're only thinking this is a Brooklyn party, not this is a soca car- party, this is a dance hall party, this is a compo party, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. They're just like, it's Saturday and I want to go to a party and I heard about this party. And this this is where we get the misconceptions where people are like, why don't, is it really going to be just all soca? Oh my days. Yes, dear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's very weird, but we also have promoters who are trying to 
kind of do crossover parties just because as a promoter, you want to make money, right? Mm -hmm. You want to get people in the door. So you're going to say you're going to play everything because you want people to come in the door. But Soka is a hook. We have people, when you say it's a Soka party, we have fanatics. We have people who are like, I'm going. And sometimes it will be advertised as a Soka party and we get there and we're hearing hip hop. Mm, For like, 30 minutes message to promote message to promoters out there if you <laughs> advertise soca and i come to your fit and hear any other kind of music i'm putting you on yeah. blast <laughs> oh absolutely wow. absolutely wow. that is my part-time job <laughs> wow okay yes yes so um the next thing i'd like to find out about is um you know your kind of lab- labor day carnival juve morning um what's that like over there um at the moment? uh those those are run by two different organizations. Okay. Um, so there is a Juve committee that runs the Juve. Okay. Personally, I don't, I don't take part in the Juve. It's not the Juve experience that I expect. Okay. Um, it's very much sort of all over the place. They okay. do have a route in theory. Right. Um, but it's sort of all over the place. I think there definitely needs to be a bit more management there because it gets violent. It gets, it's just not not put together as well as I would hope, but I do commend them for doing it. Yeah, of course. Of course you of can't course. have a carnival without a juve, right? Of course. <laughs> of course. But the actual Labor Day parade has gotten better. Um, they have a lot more oversight. The only thing is when they're promoting the events, this is run by our carnival association. Right. When they're promoting events, they're doing events all summer. Most people don't know about those events. Why is that? They don't really know what the carnival association owns. What? And what they don't own. They blame them for juve issues where they don't run the juve. Okay. They don't know. And it's part of, again, the communication. Right. We have some older people on the Carnival Association yep, yep. who feel like we've got this. We've got it handled and we're going to take care of it. And then you have younger people who are like, we want to be a part of it. We want to know what's going on. But you're not telling us to the point where we don't even know what you manage and what you don't. So when things go wrong, we're blaming you because... We don't know what else you manage. Um, it's 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 a problem. It's okay. becoming more and more of a problem. I've definitely written about it. Mm-hmm, I've gotten mm-hmm. into trouble for writing about it. Um, but it needs to be addressed. It really does. It's, again, passing on the culture, mm-hmm. passing on the history to people who are going to take up that torch when you're gone. You want that. You want them to know what's significant and what's important. Don't get me wrong. The Carnival Association puts on really good events mm-hmm. that no one knows about. Yeah, that's a challenge. That is a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm, okay. And and Juve, so Juve morning. What what issues um, do you have there? So obviously, I mean, Juve morning. Up, Juve morning up here is, um, you know, we have our we have our route. It happens at like four a.m. in the morning. Mm-hmm. There's no other people on the road. Um, only the most hardcore, hardcore of, um, you know, supporters of carnival and Caribbean culture are out there. You know, you've got the Grenadians out there doing their thing with, you know, <laughs> with the oil and the people throwing paint, people, people throwing powder. You have police there. The police are very respectful, um, you know, and everyone goes out there and ha- has fun. Um, but it sounds as though that's not, that's not how it is no. um, over there in Brooklyn for Juve Morning. No. First of all, New York is a city that never sleeps. There's not going to be a time where only a certain group of people are on the street. Okay. That's not going to happen. Okay, okay. Um, but they do have a route, and the police are out there. They've actually beefed up the police presence to try to make it you know, more fun and mm-hmm. safer. Mm-hmm. Um, they also want people to come out, which is interesting with the city. Um, with all the violent instances, you would think they would want to shut it down, and for them to beef it up, that means they're seeing revenue. <laughs> right. That's the only okay. reason you would put. Hey, carnival more brings in on carnival brings in so much money. I, I tell people, and yeah. a lot of the time, they don't realize how much of um, a money spinner carnival can be if it's done right. Right. Yes. You know? And a lot of people do come to New York for Labor Day. They do. They mm-hmm. come for the mm-hmm. weekend. We have a lot of events. We have a lot of parties. So many different promoters. You have things going on all the time um on land and sea but when it comes to the juve Mm. it's mostly younger people yes and unfortunately again because they don't really understand what this thing is they see it as i get to be out in the streets and do whatever i want that's not exactly true yeah one you are still in new york yeah (laughs) yep yep 
you still have to obey the laws of New York. Yes. But also, it's, you know, we've had instances where people have gotten violent because something happens that we know is typical in the juve that they don't understand, and now there's an issue. So they get the, so they, they might get a little bit of paint on their sneakers or something, or... They might get... Somebody stepped on their shoe, oh you're dancing my with days. my girl, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> craziness, uh, craziness. And it, it can be really sad when you hear about some of the stories and people actually being killed for things that we're like, we know that this is normal for a juve. Um, I don't know that it makes sense the way we're doing it. I mm-hmm. think maybe we should have it someplace a little bit more contained. Mm-hmm. I do, again, commend them for doing it yes. because we do need a juve for a carnival. Absolutely. But I think we really need to do more marketing, more communication about what to expect. Yes, yes. What to come prepared to do. And since it's on the street, you know, you're not really frisking people. So people are showing up with weapons and that is not okay for a juve. And those aren't carnival. And, I, you know, I have to obviously put this in there. Those people aren't, aren't carnival people. Those people, no. aren't, you know, so. And, and, we, and we, they may be West Indian. We're not saying that they're not West yeah, Indian. Yeah, they're course. definitely yeah. of West Indian background. They just, like you said, they're not carnival people. They're not used they to know. these things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 again, that that I I read that as that's the culture issue. Once you get yeah. once you get yeah. the once you get the reason for it and the background and the history, you're a lot more respectful of um, mm-hmm. of it, and you enjoy it more as well because it's not just fun. It it provides that it provides a lot of meaning. Yes. So yeah, I'd like to t- talk a little bit about about you now. So what islands have you been to so far? Um, you said you, you've been to Trinidad. Um, where else have you yeah. travelled to, and um, where else have you been to? Uh, Bahamas. I okay. went for the carnival in in the spring. Okay. Um, I went to well, usually I'm doing bigger places, so like Toronto for Caravana. Right. Um, I have been to uh, where else have I been? My goodness. Uh, <laughs> Because I'm also going places just to kind of see things. So you've done, you've I went done... to Diana for their inaugural carnival right, last year. Right, right, right. And that was great, in my opinion, for a first carnival. Okay. They... I recorded and we interviewed. Um, was very clear on things. He actually went live on Instagram and Facebook to do sort of like a press conference and let people know we've had an incident-free carnival. Um it was done really well, really well. And of course, there were people, it's the first one. So there were people there who were kind of going just to see how they can make an impact. And mm-hmm. is this worth their time to kind of invest in a mass band, a juve party, etc. But yeah, I I love carnival. I will go anywhere. <laughs> okay. I haven't been to enough carnivals at all. Not at all. Okay. But okay. definitely, definitely need to go to a lot more. But I enjoy it. At any, are there and any... I think it's important to note that they're very different. Oh yeah. Are there any? Are there yeah. any that are on your on your bucket list to to check out um, that you that um, you, you know you've you've got listed to go and see or and take part in? Well, I definitely need to go to Notting Hill Carnival. Okay. Hey, when you, when you're ready, <laughs> when you're ready, just give me a shout. I'll point you in the right direction. That is so on the list. Um, and crop over. Okay. I, I want to do that as well. You love you love lots um, of fun. Lots of fun. I, yeah. I can tell. Oh man! <laughs> um, usually, just because of work constraints, time constraints, I end up not doing those things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll go because Caravana. I've also been involved in some of the promotion for things there as well. So I usually go there right. um, and have a great time. I play with Saldina every time. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. So there. Yeah, there are a few on the bucket list, but Trinidad is coming up, and I'm going again this year. Right, okay. And who, who are you playing mass with? you playing with Sal, Sal? In Trinidad? Yeah. Lost Tribe. Okay, okay, okay. Um, have In Trinidad, question, have you ever played mass outside of Port of Spain? Or done any kind of... No. Okay. I have not. I've, I've heard of um, San Fernando. Um, I don't know if I can call that a carnival. I don't know if that's what they call it. But yeah, I've heard stories about all the other places. Even in Rima, does other uh, things too. I, I was actually going to suggest the Rima. Um, I, what, um, one year when I took a bunch of people down to Rima, we did Juve morning on, on Saturday. Sorry, yeah, we did Juve. We did Juve morning. Then later on, we went down to Rima and did the rest of Carnival down there. Mm. And it was uh, we played with the Arcadians. 
which is oh, um, okay. A, they're, they're like a, a small, um, a small social club in Arima, but they run yeah. a, they run a truck. And that year they had a they had Jamesy P, who we didn't know. He come out of nowhere and and started to sing on the truck. We we didn't oh, know. Wow. And it was that's a nice surprise. <laughs> what, what 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 I think a lot of people don't don't realize as well is there there's so much stuff going on. Um, when there's a national carnival, there's things going on all over the, all over the country. There's parties, there's yeah. fets, there's loads of different parades, yeah. um, and there's artists. There are artists who will come o- come over and they'll take part in a small village carnival. Um, yeah. And if you're not, I suppose this is I suppose this is where the the messaging again needs to be improved because if that mm-hmm. messaging doesn't get out, people will come and go. And um, there'll be a lot that they could take part in that they miss, and they end up doing right. doing the same thing over and over again, which isn't altogether yeah. bad. But there's just there's just too much too much out there to experience. Yeah, yeah. I actually did Borough Day in Point. Um, oh, right. Oh, I want to do that. I yeah, do it was that. great. Everyone told me not to go. So, um, so, so, so of course I had to go. So for the people, <laughs> so for the people who are watching who don't know. Um, what you're talking about could you just let let them know what what that is what it's about because a lot of people a lot of people don't know about borough day which is nuts oh wow well when i went i actually went the first year i went to trinidad so right. i did the study abroad so we were there in may right. um and so point fortin which is point fortin which is uh south in trinidad yeah they do a whole other it didn't even feel like a carnival it felt like just a lot of juve Right. It was so much with music and and they had stick fighting there at the time oh, too. Nice. They had yeah, they had a lot of different, you know, just different things to look at and do. I was there for like two days, really. That was it. Um, right, right. But it was so much fun. And people were just so free and relaxed and it was really different. That was the first time I was in point, but it was also the first time I had done Port of Spain's carnival. And it was a different vibe and it was much more rhythm section, juve, and so much fun. And again, people were telling me, don't go. And so I was like, I have to, because <laughs> everybody is telling me not to, which means there's something there. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Point four Tim and that, that is something I need to do. Um, I've never done it before. Never, ever done it before. So um, I think we'll leave it there. We've been, um, on, we've been online now for about 30 minutes. So... I'd like to, you know, I'd like this. To, I'd like to have some regular chats with you because I think there's a lot that um, of information that can be exchanged and a lot to learn. Um, before we go, is there anyone that you'd want you want to give a shout out to? Anyone you want to <laughs> say hi to? Anything like that? Um, so I'd actually like to let you know what's coming up for for Dish Chick. Oh yes. Um, I also work with Soka Say So and the Soka List, and we do uh, roundtable chats called blogger chicks okay we're on youtube um i also do drunk rants with soka say so which is like after we leave a party we tell you fresh from the event unfiltered what we thought of the party and so when i'm talking about those promoters who advertise 100 percent soka and we didn't hear it it goes into the rant got told them to account we put them on black got to hold them to account nice yes yeah Um, what's the youtube there's a lot that's going on what's the what's the youtube channel uh, everything you can find if you follow Dish Chick, D Y S C H I C K. I have links to everything. Put that on YouTube, they'll find you. Yes. Fantastic. Yep. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, me and you, we we got to talk. We got to talk offline about um, what kind of things we're gonna we're gonna be discussing. But um, what you've told me about Labor Day and um, Brooklyn, that's that's really interesting. <laughs> it, what's interesting, I suppose, is some of some of the issues that I I. I hear you talk about we do have up here mm. um and there's some of them that we don't um but I, I, it'll be really mm. interesting to find out about maybe some issues that we've got up here that you guys don't have down there and find out find out why you don't have those because um yeah there, there's there's probably a lot that we can we can find out yeah so, and hopefully learn from and find solutions to because I don't want our culture to die out or to be, you know, watered down or turned into something it's not. I really am big on preserving the culture, preserving the history and understanding why we do what we do and when we do it. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Um, thanks a lot, Diana. And sure. we will speak very, very soon. Okay, All thank right. you. You take care. <laughs> Bye.
and cut. Cool. Brilliant. Yay. So I'm going 